John Graney here now at the Alumni Recreation Center getting ready for basketball at the Alumni Recreation Center. And of course, as, as per usual, I'm joined by my broadcast partners, Kevin McGraw and Jim Brennan. Right now, we're awaiting the playing of the national anthem. Siena and Lemoyne back together again. These two teams have played 57 times in the past. Lemoyne holds the edge by a 2 to 1 ratio, 38 to 19. Right now in the background, perhaps you hear the voice of Bob Lawson indicating that we're about to hear the national anthem. So we'll pause right now for this moment and watch the national anthem performed here at the Alumni Recreation Center with the Siena Color Guard at midcourt. Interesting game to put it mildly. Siena playing a Division II opponent. That not unusual, but the fact that Mike Dean scheduled this team home and away and has over the previous two years, that a bit of a surprise. Siena, of course, tonight will say goodbye to one of the great players in the history of this school. The last regularly scheduled home game for Jeffrey Robinson and Kevin. His stay here certainly has been a trip after graduating from LaSalle and Troy four years ago. Yeah, he's a local product and he's played well. Uh, he struggled a little bit this year, but he's had a great career. Right now, he's the all-time leading scorer. He can do so many things, and uh, I'm sure Jeffrey would like to go out in uh, great fashion with, with a nice game tonight and, of course, uh, a Big Mac tournament. Indeed. And, of course, uh, the leader of the Lemoyne squad is a young player named Len Rouse. Interesting, was recruited a bit by Siena. He's a native of Syracuse, and he has given Siena fits in each of the two games they've played over the last two years. Yeah, he's played very well against Siena, and uh, this is a good Lemoyne club tonight. This is their next-to-last game of the regular season. Then they've got their own Division II tournament at Gannon in uh, Pennsylvania in a setting that's much like this here at the Alumni Recreation Center. Crowd of about 4,000, and they're very loud. So this will be a good test for Lemoyne tonight as they prepare for their postseason play. It's been an interesting series in some ways in that uh, two years ago when the rivalry got renewed, Siena was an overwhelming favorite here at the Arc. And yet with 15 seconds to play, Siena only led 73 to 70, and Lemoyne had the ball. They took a three-second, uh, three-point shot, missed it. Siena got the rebound, made the one and one, and won the game by five. Last year at Syracuse, it was supposed to be close, and not at all. Siena totally dominated, winning by 39, 91 to 52. How will tonight's game go? Well, who knows? But we do know this. Kevin McGraw spoke to Siena basketball coach Mike Dean about tonight's contest about an hour ago. Let's go to that tape right now. Tonight's opponent, Lemoyne, uh, on paper, uh, looks like a team you should handle. But, of course, games are not won and lost on paper. Well, certainly not. And Lemoyne gave us uh, as tough a game as we could handle two years ago on this floor. It was our closest game that entire year here in the Arc. Uh, they're a very, very good basketball team. Lenny Roush has always given us problems. He's kind of made a career uh, against Siena. And even though we've won the last two meetings, uh, two years ago, like I said, was a very challenging game. We're hoping that we don't look past this game. We need to play well to, to garner some momentum for the league tournament. I know a lot of alums in the area are interested. Will this rivalry continue? Yeah, I, I think it will. I, I think because uh, where we get oftentimes big timed on the other end of the schedule when we play bigger schools uh, I refuse to do that on the uh, on the bottom end and we'll, we'll continue to play Lemoyne in the home and home series uh, alternating every year John Beeline and I have kind of uh, grown up together in coaching he was at Erie when I was at Del High and uh, we're very good friends I think it's it's a game perhaps that's better for Lemoyne than it is for us and some people say it's suicidal to play this game because it's a no-win situation yet uh, on paper there are games that we should win uh, I think there are a lot of uh, Lemoyne alumni in this area that, that look forward to this game 
And uh, I think it's a, it's a game that uh, is it's positive for us because it always guarantees it's a home game every other year. So we'll continue to play it. And uh, Lemoyne is not a team that is a, is a slouch club. They're a very good Division II basketball team. They beat Army a year ago this same time of year. And so we're, we're hoping to avoid that kind of scenario to play well and, like I said, get some momentum going into the league tourney next week. Best of luck. Thanks, Kevin. That's Seattle coach Mike Dean. Now back to John. Lemoyne of Syracuse has long been a Division II power, the lone non-Division I game on Siena's schedule this year, and they're coached by John Beelan. He's now in his eighth year as the head coach of the Dolphins, and he has won about two of every three games he has coached at the Syracuse School, and he's also one of Mike Dean's closest friends in the coaching profession. Prior to the start of tonight's contest, maybe about an hour or so ago, Jimmy Brennan of our staff also spoke to Coach Beelan about the Lemoyne basketball program and tonight's game. Coach, there's quite a long basketball history between these two schools, but now that they're on different levels, what's a game like this mean to your club? Well, it's, it's part of, the, of many highlights in our season. We like to come into the Albany area and play. We have a lot of alumni from here, and, and uh, Division II uh, is an awful competitive basketball that I don't think a, people, a lot of people realize. Uh, Siena certainly, certainly is not your, your classic low major program anymore. Uh, but we always think that we can come in here and give a, a school like Siena, who is very similar to Lemoyne in, in, in many, many ways, except the emphasis on basketball, a, a good game, and it's a traditional rivalry. Games like this are oftentimes played at the beginning of the season. Uh, it's not too often you find one at the last week of February. Does that mean anything? Well, I think, I think it, it helped Mike out, and it helped us out also, that we had a week between games, and he had uh, an off weekend before the MAC tournament, so you, you almost would like to have a game now rather than take a week off from practice and... Uh, we, we played pretty well the other night, and I'd hate to take another week off before we play the game. So I think it will serve well for both squads. What are you guys looking to do tonight? Uh, just play our game. Uh, we, we don't really change too much as the, as the year goes on. And uh, we're, we're, right now we're, we're playing fairly confidently, certainly a different team than, than Siena saw last uh, November when they killed us, and more like a team that Siena saw two years ago here where, where we were at least competitive with them. All right, Coach, thanks very much, and uh, good luck tonight. Thank you. LeMoyne coach John Beeline, and we'll be back with the starting lineups and the opening tip-off for tonight's game right after this. Local presentation of Siena basketball has been made possible through member support and by your Chevy Geo Network dealers, offering the new 1990 Geo Prism. Your Chevy Geo Network dealers, the dealers who care. It's a festival of the very best of public TV. March 1st through the 18th on member-supported WMHX. WMHX, Schenectady. Local presentation of Game of the Week, Siena Basketball, is made possible through member support and by Callanan Industries. For over 100 years, Callanan has been working to bring communities closer together through a network of roads, highways, and bridges and by KeyBank, N.A., serving the Capital District with a full range of banking services and options since 1825. KeyBank, at your convenience. That is security over here. We're back now at the Alumni Recreation Center just moments before the tip-off of tonight's game between the Lemoyne Dolphins and Siena College, a game that uh, will wrap up the regular season for the Saints. Siena comes in at 14 and 12, coming off a very disappointing loss at West Point about a week ago, and uh, a game was decided with the clock stopped, showing 0-0, a foul called against Siena, a bit controversial. And a lot of people are saying that uh, that may have precluded any chance of Siena getting an NIT bid should they not win the automatic NCAA qualifier at the MAC uh, tournament next week. Well, it certainly puts a little added pressure on I think they have to perform very well and maybe make it to the final, that MAC uh, conference tournament, and then uh, hope that they do get a bid if, in fact, they don't win the automatic bid to the NCAA. The one thing that uh, that all hinges on, of course, is all the conference tournaments. If there's an upset in a conference tournament and a number six or a number seven or a number eight seed wins it, well, they get the automatic bid, and then all the seeded teams one through four, which would normally be going anyway, are going to go, and that takes up a spot. So that would, uh, a lot of what goes into the NIT is contingent upon how those conference tournaments work out. Having ceremonies right now for the graduating senior, Jeffrey Robinson. Let's listen to Bob Lawson. As he walks off the floor, his name will appear in the Saints record book no less than ten times. The single game record for most steals and best three-point percentage. Season 
record for three-pointers made and attempted. Three-point percentage in steals. Jeffrey holds the career record for three-pointers made and attempted. And earlier this season, in a 79-59 win over Iona, Jeff Robinson became Siena College's all-time leading scorer. Siena MVP as a sophomore, North Atlantic Conference Player of the Year as a junior, on all these selection by the Sporting News. Ladies and gentlemen, it is pride that we welcome the captain from Troy, New York, Jeffrey Robinson. And his parents, Dolores and Oliver Robinson. has become a tradition of Siena College basketball and college programs all over the land and graduating seniors are honored before the last home game. Siena did not get a chance to do that last year because of the measles outbreak so uh, very nice tonight that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, Dolores and Oliver Robinson could be here with their son reflecting back on a phenomenal athletic career here at Siena College. Now the starting lineups again the voice of Bob Lawson. A 6'4 sophomore from Brownsville, New York number 32 Tom Herhusky Forward, a 6'5 freshman from Blaisdell, New York. Number 41, Chris Buckholz. At center, a 6'6 junior from Syracuse. Number 33, Len Rauch. At guard, a 6'2 freshman from Syracuse. Number 21, John Haas. And at guard, a 6'0 senior from Lackawanna, New York. Number 23, Russell Barnes. Head coach of Lemoyne is John DeMond. Now the starting lineup for the Saints of Siena College. At forward, a 6'6 senior from Troy, New York. The captain, number 14, Jeffrey Robinson. At forward, a 6'7 freshman from Buffalo, New York. Number 33, Lee Matthews. Center, a 6'11 junior from Oneonta, New York, number 34, Steve Downey. At guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Marshall, Michigan, number 12, Bruce Schroeder. And at guard, a 5'10 junior from West Orange, New Jersey, number 4, Mark Brown. The head coach of the Saints, Mike Dean, assisted by We're just about ready to go. There's a look at Mike Dean. He's got a record, of course, in his fourth year here. He's got a 79 and 35. He is 2 and 0 lifetime against Lemoyne, having won each of the last two years. These two programs discontinued their rivalry back after the 1975-76 campaign, and Mike Dean renewed it, saying that he got sick and tired of all the big guys telling him we'll trade you off two for one, the Pittsburghs and Evansvilles and so on. And he felt with a rival as traditional as Lemoyne, it should be only right. They would play home and away each year, and from what I understand, Siena will be going to Lemoyne again next year to play the Division II rival. Which flies in the face a little bit of uh, the MAC conference, and a lot of the lower-rated conferences are after their team members, not to schedule down because it hurts their overall league rating, but uh, Mike Dean, in any event, is going to keep scheduling Lemoyne, and not that I don't think the MAC power rating is hurt all that much by Siena playing one game like this. There's the final standings of the conference. One game yet to be played, I believe. Army uh, still has a game. Niagara actually has lost their 11th game. Army still has a game at LaSalle. And Fordham is, is finished at 10 and 6, that should be. So Fordham finishes in third place. Siena finishes in second. Holy Cross, a wire to wire winner of that division in the MAC conference. Rouse will jump against Downey. Downey, five inches taller, easily controls the tap, but it's pulled down by Lemoyne. Mark Brown pokes away, and a foul on the play. Foul against John Haas. 
I think the first three or four minutes is going to be very critical here for Lemoyne. Lemoyne was credited with possession, so the arrow goes Shin his way as well. So that will go as a turnover. Lemoyne opens with a man-to-man. Of course, we watch Mark Brown. He needs only four assists to set the school's all-time assist record, eclipsing the mark Matt Brady set here a couple of years ago. Here's Robinson open for three. He's going to be short. Schroeder's inside for the board and the putback. Santa comes with a full court pressure. Ball thrown ahead now to Buckholz. He's got the foul line jumper and gets it down. Chris Buckholz, freshman, 6'5", comes in averaging six points a game, ties the game at two. Down he's got the post and kicks it back out. Now they go inside to Matthews, seeing him running a double post on the offense, and Matthews fumbled it over the end line. Pretty good man-to-man -man defense by my Lemoyne both times down. This is Russell Barnes. He runs the show for Lemoyne, leads the club in assists and steals, and finds time to score more than 10 points a game as well. Excellent entry pass inside. Santa fell asleep on the backside, but her Husky shot was knocked away, and Schroeder came down with it. Robinson maintains control. Played by her Husky. Now Mark Brown penetrates, drops it for Downey, cut into the hoop, laid up good. And Sienna comes with full court pressure. Here's a lob ahead, caught by her Husky, goes to the basket, lay it off beautifful. Great dish. That's the worst to Buckholz for the layup. Lemoyne doing a good job attacking Sienna's full court pressure. The one thing they're doing, they're making Sienna pay the price once they beat that initial pressure. A lot of teams will throw over that, and then when they catch it, they don't do much with it. Yeah, and that really hurts, because then the team will keep the pressure up. Good screen by Downey. Got Mark Brown open. His shot went halfway down, but wouldn't fall. Rebound pulled down by her Husky. Barnes coming back. One surprise starter for Lemoyne. Haas getting the start over Julius Edwards in the backcourt. And Sienna counters with a man-to-man -man also. Lemoyne going to be a little more patient. Barnes matched up by ball thrown away. Barnes thought that her husky was going to go for the, the dunk. Well, he, he was right. He went back door, but he wasn't looking for the alley open. The result was a turnover. That really was the only pass that uh, Barnes could make, however. He couldn't bounce it through it. If that was to be completed at all, it would have had to have been upstairs. Well, Sherman Douglas perfected that pass up in the city of Syracuse for four years. And I got the feeling just watching Barnes throw it, but he's watched that throw a few times. Here's Mark Brown for three. Home run ball. Well, Barnes doing a lazy job getting out on Mark Brown. And Sienna, after every made basket, coming with full court press for Lemoyne, not bothered by it yet. Yeah, well, that time they had the numbers there, and Lemoyne chose to pull it out. Rouse with an overlook pass, knocked away by Matthews, and now Robinson throws it away, looking for Grizzulis. Grizzulis in quickly for Steve Downey tonight. So quick, I didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a look at Barnes coming out of the backcourt. He's a senior out of Lackawanna. Outside of Buffalo. Lemoyne, virtually their entire team from New York State. Here's Roush inside, puts it up off glass and scores. Well, excellent pick and roll there. And Roush is a uh, pretty good player. He's been very effective against Siena. 7-6, Saints lead it by one. Matthews inside, jump shoots, and scores. Matthews, who has a legitimate shot to be named the conference's rookie of the year, and that will be announced this coming Thursday night in the press conference preceding the MAC tournament. Outside, two-pointer by her Husky, no good, but he runs down the rebound, goes to the basket, drops it off for Rouse, laid up, and in. Excellent fall by her Husky and a great disc in, in, in the route. Yeah, Lemoyne's shown they can pass the ball as a team. Here's Robinson hits a three. Back comes her Husky between the legs, loses control a bit, but it goes to Haas. Right side of Barnes. Now they enter the ball into Roush, who's got a couple hoops already. Played against Rizoulis. His jumper no good. Rebound, Mark Brown. Looks to run. Lemoyne has the numbers, though. Brown spins in the lane, and there's a bump against Grizoulis. That time Mark Brown beat his teammates down the floor. Jeff Robinson a little bit slow, filling the lane on the right side. 
So it ended up being a two on three break as Lemoyne did get the defense back. Siena makes massive substitutions now. This Her. figures to be a game, John, where all the guys on the squad will get in and get some time. Mike Brown is checked in. Downey is back and Herter's in as well. Matthews is checked out. There's a bad pass. A steal made by Lemoyne. Barnes pushes into the forecourt. Saints lead it by four, 12-8. That'll be a travel call. That's a call that has become fashionable this year. And I'm not sure he did travel. No, I don't think so. I don't know if we have another look at that or not. But uh, almost uh, all the officials this year, anytime you pump fake and try to go by a guy, uh, they've been calling the travel. Mark Brown with the ball. This is Herter, played by her Husky. Has down the inside. They go to Steve. Steve starts the basket laid up. Got nothing but glass. Pazulis gets the ball back. Out to Herter for three. Siena using the three-point goal early on. Herter, Robinson, and Brown have all knocked one down from there. Lemoyne's been getting hurt with the second shot. Siena able to keep that ball alive. Roush really the only one on the board for Lemoyne. Well, he averages eight and a half rebounds a game. To put it in perspective, their second leading rebounder has yet to check into the ball game. That's Jim Cunningham. He averages twice as many rebounds as anybody else in this club. So if he doesn't get it done inside, nobody will. Chris Buckholz hits his third basket. He has already hit his seasonal average in the first five minutes and ten seconds of the game. Well, he's not intimidated. He's taken it to the bucket three times. Had the pull-up jumper all three occasions. Downey should have a field day inside against this club. Gets his second basket in softly off the glass. Siena by seven, 17 to 10. Downey knocks the pass away right in the hands of Herter. Throwing ahead now to Downey as he runs the court. Controls, has it knocked away as he starts toward the basket. And now Lemoyne's going to slow it down a little bit. Roush pops out. Siena playing a man to man. Bringing the big people out. Now backdoor cut by Roush. He got past the defense, I believe, of Gazoulis on a pick on the weak side. And the first foul of the game against Siena has been called. Well, that's Tom Herter who came in over the back. Well, that was a set play. The foul on number 10, Tom Herter. Just saw the tail end of it there, but uh, Roush gave the ball up, then cut off the pick back to her. Controlled the alley oop pass, and he's going to have two free throws as he was fouled. Lemoyne's run a couple of backdoor plays that have gotten the man free from the wing toward the hoop. The only problem is the ball's been on the weak side, and they've had to throw it literally through the entire defense to get it to the man. Got a good look at the 6'6 junior right there, Len Rouse, who had an outstanding tournament in the high school championships up in Glens Falls three years ago. Terrific baseball player as well. And certainly the star of this Lemoyne squad. He has six points. Buckles has six. That's it for Lemoyne. They have 12. They trail by five. We've got 14 minutes remaining in the opening half. Pretty good start for Lemoyne. They need a few defensive stops, however, and here they switch into a 1-3-1 uh, zone defense. Yes. That yeah. almost looks 3-2. Both clubs have scored relatively easily against the opponent here. There's a good entry pass to Matthews from Brown. He pushes it off last. Mark Brown gets one step closer to the all-time assist-leading status here at Siena College. Coming back to the way a hook shot of beauty at that is by Russell Barnes. Got a good feed from Julius Edwards, who has checked in for Haas in the backcourt for Lemoyne. There's Mike Brown bumped a little bit as he goes, gets inside, squeezes the shot up. No good, but he's been fouled on the play. Foul on Edwards, his first, team's third. And Mike Brown will get a chance to score at the line for the Saints. I'm a little surprised that Lemoyne uh, wants to play at this fast a pace, especially against uh, probably a much more talented team in Siena. Robinson now comes back in, replacing Herter for Siena. We've got quite a bit of rest for this early in the game. Only about five minutes, six minutes into it. Mark Brown, by the way, has just broken the all-time Siena assist record. He now has 594 in his junior year, breaking the record set by Matt Brady. He needed four coming into tonight's contest. He also, if he scores 27 points tonight, will become the second-leading scorer in Siena College history in only his third year. 
He would pass Eric Banks for 27 or more points tonight. Robinson, of course, the all-time leader. Mark Brown figures to break that come next year. There's a ball thrown away on the ground by Buckholz. Yeah, well, Roush out of the ball game, and he was doing a good job in the backcourt transferring the passes because Roush at about 6'6", was much bigger than Seattle players, but that time, uh, Lemoyne turned it over without Roush in there. Yeah, Bob Pittick is right now, right now matched up on Robinson. Pittick not used that often for this club. Getting some surprise early playing time. Here's Mark Brown, excellent pass inside to Matthews, right up and in. Added that record. Matthews is another one who can have a field day inside because he physically overmatches virtually every Lemoyne front quarter. Quick time out here by Lemoyne. Prophetic timing, Jimmy. <laughs> he got it back, got another easy one off the glass. And this looks like it, it should be relatively easy. Santa looks as if they could have a, a field day inside all day. You look at what they've scored so far. Four baskets for Matthews inside, two for Downey, and of Siena's other four baskets, three of them home run balls. And the other basket was uh, Schroeder put back from uh, right underneath exactly. the bucket. Point blank range. Here's the fumbled pass. Ball fumbled in the backcourt by Jim Cunningham, who just checked into the ball game. And Mike Brown's pass is actually a bad one, but it bounced well for Siena right to Matthews for the easy lay -in. And we're going to see Lenny Rouse check back in for Lemoyne. And I think they'll be a little more effective this trip against that full court Siena pressure. Rouse has got pretty good poise. Kevin, you were there last year in Syracuse when Siena just blew this team right out of the water. I mean, it was a 39-point differential, and it was decided in the first five or ten minutes, and that's the reason why I'm surprised they're looking to run as much as they are tonight. Yeah, I, I think the one thing that has been effective, of course, the last couple times, they've come up with a few steals. But the one thing that full-court pressure by Siena has done has really uh, created an up-tempo game, and I think this is just too fast because Siena is much more talented and much deeper. But I think what Lemoyne's trying to do is play the game the way they would normally play it and the way they will play it in their upcoming postseason tournament. They don't want to change too many things tonight. Yeah, this is sort of an experimental game for them as well. In the backcourt now, this is Russell Barnes measuring the Siena defense. Siena looks like they're playing a man-to-man -man right now. It looks, uh, we'll see yeah. it. Got to send a man through, and they're not playing a man-to-man. -man. It's a matchup zone. It's a good sign when the matchup zone looks like a man-to-man -man because the principles are there. Edwards throwing down the baseline to Barnes, back outside now to Edwards. Shot clock is at nine. I don't think LeMoyne knows. Roush does. Down to four. They've got to go right here. They get it to Roush, and he'll fire it. He'll be short. Rebound to Robinson. Robinson pushes ahead. Entry pass to Downey. Downey loses control on the spin. Almost tackles Pittick. Barnes comes back, and a reach-in foul is going to be called on Schroeder. Well, oh, good aggressive uh, move to the hoop that time. Let's take a look at this now. Here comes Barnes. Watch for the reach-in from Schroeder. That is Bruce's expression led you to believe he thought he got all ball. <laughs> and he may have, but again, with the reach, as a man goes to the basket, that is called 90% of the time. Well, from our angle here, I thought uh, he got him on the wrist. Tamer Husky checks back in now, replacing Pittick down the other Dolphs. Excuse me, John. Down the other end. Downey having a little problem. He's got to keep that ball up above his head and go up with a shot because... Lemoyne very pesky. When he puts it on the floor, they're going after it. Barnes makes the first of two. Lemoyne was victorious over the College of St. Rose just this past week up in Syracuse by a score of 97-83, to 83, playing on the Division II level. And they've had an outstanding year, coming in at 16-8. Coach Beeline, lifetime, 128-69. So he's won about... Well, somewhere between 60 and 65 percent of his games playing on the Division II level. There's simply a different level of play. And now Lemoyne showing some full court pressure. I think he wanted to get a trip. Mark Brown was on the bench and he came with a full court pressure, but Mike Dean substituted and put Mark back in. Here's Robinson for a two down the middle. Got it. Well, excellent double screen that time, and Sienna slow getting back. Here's Sir Husky going to the hoop and scoring. And that will result in a timeout by Mike Dean. One thing about Mike Dean we can discuss, he calls his timeouts in a very unconventional way compared to other coaches, in that he sees something he doesn't like, bingo. He calls a timeout right away, he just doesn't wait. 
Yeah, obviously there's uh, two schools of thought to that. Now, Siena does not play a lot of games during the course of the season that are commercial television games, so he doesn't have the TV timeout kind of thing to deal with. So, you know, I wonder that if a large majority of the games were on commercial television, uh, if that would alter his thinking any, knowing that the clock's going to be stopped for every four minutes. Well, the other thing is, uh, a lot of coaches like to save them up towards the end of the game and call the timeouts after the basket, you know, in a close ball game or something. But I'm on a school of thought, use them, because you really, you can't take them with you. I think you need one or two towards the tail end of the game. So you have two, actually you have three to play with uh, during the course of the game. And certainly Mike Dean, uh, as you got pointed out, John, when he sees something wrong, uh, he'll, he'll call a quick timeout and correct the... Uh, What's going wrong out there? Indeed. Let's take a look at the last Siena score. Lemoyne's last score, we should say, is her Husky beat the field down. Robinson trying to get back. And her Husky extends the body, protecting the ball very well. Away from the possible block by Robinson. Well, as we pointed out, Lemoyne has had pretty decent success at breaking the Siena pressure. 26-18, Saints lead it by eight, and they have the ball against zone coverage by Lemoyne. 1-3-1 one, one right now being played by Lemoyne. Lob inside to Matthews. He fumbled the pass. Ball was perfectly delivered. He was right at point blank range, but did not control the ball. This is Rouse throwing to Edwards on the left side. And Rouse now posted up back outside the ball. Comes to a jump shooting her husky. In and out, no good. And Mark Brown runs it down the corner. Cunningham had a shot at the foul line, passed it up. Her husky with an open jumper couldn't get it down. Here goes Schroeder. Jump pass to Grazulis. He's home free. Well, excellent fish that time by Schroeder. Penetration on the base runner. When you get that against the zone, normally somebody opens as long as they cut toward the basket. Here's Cunningham. Hook shot. Good. Nice shot inside by Jim Cunningham. Did an excellent job staying with the shot. He uh, absorbed the bump. Here's Robinson for three. Bingo. Jeff looking loosey goosey tonight. Lemoyne has to do a better job defensively. Yeah, they're not getting out on the three point shooter as well at all. Siena's had, what, five uncontested three point shots. Drop four of them. Fouls called on Grazulis, his first team's third. One of the problems they're having, LeMoyne trying to pack it in a little bit around the big guys down low, and they really just can't cover up everyone. Here's the reach-in foul right there on Grazulis, obviously across the arm. Go to jail for that. Siena has scored 31 points in the game's first quarter. He's played exactly 10 minutes. So a mathematician will tell you that's the rate of 124 for the game. Great catch. And score off the same move by Len Roush inside. He has eight points. He is tied for game high right now with Matthews and Robinson. And I'll tell you what, if Lenny Roush was on Siena's club, they could win that MAC tournament. He's the one guy, the banger. He's an excellent passer. He's got all the tools. Here's the foul on the drive by Brown. A little hand checking going on right there by Julius Edwards. Herder now checks in for Grizzulis in the Siena lineup. Good look at Tommy. Here's Brown faking the shot. Pass knocked away by Rouse. Bounces to Siena. Good reach in there by Cunningham against Brown. Brown's pass back. Not a good one. And it's stolen to the basket. Goes Haas who scores. John Haas gets the hoop. Well, excellent pressure that time down in the corner against Mark Brown, and that caused the turnover. Pass is too tall for Herter. Siena's lead only seven. Mark Brown looks to make it ten. Can't do it. Rebound comes down inside to Cunningham. Lemoyne could get to within five of this trip. Make it. Uh, Rouse is going to try the three there. Well, I think a smart move. Kick it around. Get a good shot. Official thought he was going to try it. Had yeah. that arm up. <laughs> and an outside jumper knocked down by Jim Cunningham. And Siena's lead is down to five. 31-26. And another... Timeout called by Mike Dean. And a great job by Lenny Roush. Uh, Matthews went down, was going for the double team, and Lenny Roush kicked that ball to a wide open shooter. Mike trying to get an answer there from freshman Lee Matthews about the uh, breakdown, perhaps defensively, by Siena. Siena, of course, opens up the MAC tournament on Saturday night, and we know now that their opponent will be the winner of the Canisius Manhattan game on Friday. And that should be a good doubleheader on Saturday night with Siena playing uh, either Canisius or Manhattan in the nightcap with Sal in the 7 o'clock game. Let me ask you uh, two analysts here tonight. If form holds up, we should get Fordham and Holy Cross in the semis and Siena and LaSalle. How do you see those games going? If it gets that far. 
Well, certainly LaSalle, I think, is the team to beat. Uh, you know, their closest game, I guess, was an overtimer uh, yesterday, and uh, they pulled that one out. But certainly Siena would have to play a, just a, a dynamite game, really, to upset LaSalle. And uh, I think uh, Holy Cross uh, is probably going to be the favorite in the other game. But Fordham certainly has enough athletes to give Holy Cross some trouble. Jimmy, uh, I don't and know I think it's the kind of game Holy Cross does a lot of perimeter shooting, much like Siena, because they're a fast break and, uh, you know, a run and gun kind of team. If the shots aren't dropping and you never know from one night to the next whether they will be. And certainly Fordham has a much stronger front line. And if they get success pounding the ball inside and get a couple of the Holy Cross big men in foul trouble, they could easily win that game. Back to this one, Sienna, uh, Lemoyne in, a, in the zone here. It's a five-point ball game, 31-26. Saints by five with 8.45 remaining in the opening half. There goes Herter toward the basket. His shot is blocked very impressively inside by her Husky. And he pulled down his own rebound. Good play by Tom Herhusky. Now the ball goes into jump shooting Winnie Rouse, who scores over Herter. And we've got ourselves a ball game, 31 to 28. Sienna led it 28 to 18, and Lemoyne has ripped off a 10 to 3 run, but Robinson answers that with a home run ball. Boy, Jeff looks loose on that shot tonight. He's got three of them. Well, Lemoyne having a tough time matching up. But certainly they've had pretty good success working against that Sienna defense. Sienna's made five home run balls. You take away that bonus point, this will be a one point ball game. Because Lemoyne has none. We thought the, the inside game would be the strict difference, but Sienna's not going inside of late. There's a four shot by Roush, and he knows it. Rebound to Herter. Entry pass by Brown, stolen by Roush. He's a good defender. Here's her Husky on the cut. Gets it up off the glass and in. I got a feeling those choose up games, Lenny Roush was the first guy picked in a lot of them in the playgrounds. And up Syracuse. Well, That's a good Lemoyne club. They're playing well tonight. Boy, he is really a prime time player on this level. Robinson with a jump pass inside and a foul call, perhaps on Rouse. Certainly in the first 12 minutes of this one, he's shown us a little bit of everything. Another foul, I believe, is on Cunningham inside. And to this point, not too many fouls fall. They've been letting them play. Yeah, it's five against Lemoyne, three against Siena. 7.23 to go in the opening half, so Siena gets the ball inbound. Excellent entry pass to Lee Matthews. He has five hoops for 10 points in the first half. Siena by six. And Roush is out of the ball game here. And again, this will be a key time for Lemoyne because there's certainly a different ball club with him on the bench. He stands up, much like a fighter in a corner, does not take a seat on the bench. There's Mark Brown tangled up inside, and the foul is called against Lemoyne. That will go again against Cunningham, his second. A lot of times when you see guys battling for a position under the hoop, the foul oftentimes goes against the defensive player. But there clearly Cunningham hooked Mark Brown with the arm around the neck. Brown was trying to duck under so he could front him defensively. Cunningham probably felt him coming through and tried to impede his progress. There's a pass for Robinson inside. <laughs> it looked like a shot, but it was awfully low for a shot for Schroeder. Well, you know, that's actually, when Jeff Robinson went up, he was actually in the act of shooting because his, the reason for going up was to tip in that pass. This is an alley-oop play. They're going to call it a one-on-one, -on -one, though. There's a... Well, Sienna overloaded the one side and brought Matthews up to the high post. Sent Jeff backdoor for the alley-oop. I'd like to see an official call out a two-shot foul sometime, though, because clearly he was going up to tip the ball in. Well, he didn't have possession of the ball. I think that was the rule. And Roush with a board. And it becomes relevant when Robinson breaks up the front end of a one-and-one. -on -one. And the longer the Lemoyne can stay right here with the four or six point deficit, they're gonna gain some confidence. Roush right back in, played by Downey to the basket laid up, no good, rebound Matthews. Well, and I think the presence of Downey just enough to alter that one. Oh, wait, up, Jeff. Up, Brown gave up his dribble, shoulder helped him out. And there's Coach Beeline looking at his defense. They got, a, they got a mismatch here. Downey matched up on a much smaller man. Here's Schroeder. 
for three, no good. Matthews puts it back, scores, and is fouled. Well, real tough inside for Lemoyne to match uh, Seattle on the board. Let's take a look at the replay. Nobody laid a body on Lee Matthews. And even if they did, I'm not sure it would have made a difference. He's, he's becoming a force inside. Sienna's leading rebound as a freshman. Gets the three-point play, and he's having a monster first half. In the backcourt now, this is Russell Barnes. Got one second to beat the time. Goes ahead to Buckholtz. Back in the lane to Roush. His jumper no good. Rebound comes out to Downey. Gets it ahead to Mark Brown. Gets it inside to Downey. Starts with the best. He gives it to Schroeder. Way up. He was fouled on the floor before the shot. Foul is going to be called against Julius Edwards. Excellent entry pass. A little, bit, little hot dog on that, but uh, a lot of fun to watch Mark Brown do those things. Well, Mark's certainly capable. Watch this between the legs. And then he'll make the blind over the shoulder pass to Downey. And Lemoyne does a good double team job on Downey there, who spots Schroeder inside and the foul committed before the shot. Still a lot of play on there, I thought. Shooting one and one. John Hawks checks back. Actually, that call might have been a big break. I think Schroeder would have went up and laid it in for two. Well, he actually did, but of course the, the referee waved it off early on, saying he was fouled on the floor. Good call. Schroeder, one and one, no good. Sienna's one and one woes continue into this game. Well, Lemoyne really needs to have a positive trip here. This is Buckholz. Started out with three early hoops. There's a pushing foul against Sienna. And yeah, that's on Schroeder. Roush set a pick, and Schroeder just. Ran him down. Probably a frustration foul. The foul, number 12, Bruce Schroeder is second personal. Four. Santa by nine. We've got 519 remaining in the opening half. Bob Pittick checks back in for Lemoyne, replacing John Haas. And look for Lenny Roush maybe to take Steve Downey outside on the perimeter. Ball comes into Roush. Leaves back for Pittick. Here's Roush outside, didn't take the shot, goes cross court to Pittick. Look inside of Buckholz, can't get it there. This is a Husky for three, way off the mark, rebound Robinson. Mark Brown in a hurry, will look for the three off the break, get it. His second basket, both of them home run balls. Roush goes ahead now to her Husky, to the basket, lay it up, no good, rebound Hurry. Lemoyne may be getting now into a pace of the game they don't want. Excellent pass inside, but Downey cutting away from the hoop. Herder right back to Downey. Starts through the lane. His hook is no good. Rebound. Robinson kept it alive, but controlled. Robinson gets entangled with the official. And a timeout and a good one called by Coach B1. Certainly was. I think the pace of the game is just a little too quick for Lemoyne. It's starting to get away. You can see the fire in Mark Brown's eyes. But they're uh, well within striking distance, only down 12. They just need to... Uh, have a few successful trips here on offense. Yeah, they really haven't had any, and uh, Sienna's run off the last six points, upping that lead now to a dozen. Yeah, they've the lead of the night. It was 36 30. Let's, let's listen in now on Coach B1. They are not guarding you. Pretty good advice, just about what we talked about. It has been an eight-point run for Sienna from a 34 to 30 lead up to 42 to 30. We'll tell you this, to the next basket Lee Matthews scored, he will set himself his new career high. He's never been above 14. He's got 13 already here in the first half. 
Adam Lemoyne looking maybe to set a little more tempo here, walking the ball across the timeline. They go inside the Roush, played by Robinson. Lemoyne needs to kick the ball a little faster. Too much dribbling against the Siena zone. Shot clock still shows 13 seconds. They have plenty of time. It's Barnes. For Husky to Barnes. Barnes starts his move, jump pass out to her Husky. He'll go for the three and get it. First one for Lemoyne tonight. Well, that's how you work the 45 second clock right now. End up with a three point shot. He is their second leading scorer, averaging over 15 a game, just behind Routes. Routes at 15.4, her Husky at 15.1. And they're now the leading scorers for Lemoyne in this game as well, despite the opening start for uh, Chris Buckholz. Husky had to sit out last year, too, coming in as a transfer. So he's having a good year after the year layoff. Mark Brown blowing to the basket and scoring, going right past Buckholz. His third hoop, he has eight points. First conventional basket. Entry pass laid up and no good by Buckholz, but he's been fouled on the shot. Well, again, LeMoyne doing a pretty good job at the offensive end, but uh, they've had their troubles. They really uh, haven't had any answers trying to stop Seattle. Let's check it. The foul's called on Downey. There he is right there. Got him across the arm on the shot. Buckholz now has seven points. 6'5", freshman of Blaisdell, New York. Down near Buffalo. Lemoyne has done very well with their front line offensively. It's on this end as Matthews sets his career scoring high. With three minutes to go in the first half, so in the first 17 minutes, Lee Matthews has 15 points. Well, again, the penetration by Mark Brown set that one up. Here's a bomb from outside by Pettick, air ball. Had not the shot the coach beeline wanted. And here goes down. Uh oh He saw that lane open up. Well, a poor job by Lemoyne. They didn't stop the ball, and Steve Downey with a big time slam. It looked for a minute like he was gonna pull up at the three point line if that lane filled, but it didn't. And that was all she wrote. There's a travel call against Pettick. He certainly had a bad last two trips down for Lemoyne. Well, Sienna's gonna end up with probably 55, 56 points for the first half, and that's just way too many, unless you're involved in a game with Loyola. We have 31 with uh, a quarter gone. There's a lob inside to Matthews. He's doing anything he wants inside. Well, Sienna having success just going right over the top of Lemoyne's defense because uh, their tallest player is 6'6". 50 to 35. Saints have really opened it up now by 15. And what has, in the final minutes of this first half, become very reminiscent of what happened a year ago up in Syracuse. I think Lemoyne, it's important for them to keep continuing to run their offense and get good shots. Pittick looks for another three. Good tip by Rouse. He controlled that nicely. Didn't get it down. Now Barnes has it. Lemoyne will get their third shot. And more importantly, keep that ball away from Sienna. Rouse tries to force a pass inside. Hits the bottom of the rim. And here comes Downey out of the pack. He may go coast to coast. Tries to. Offensive foul on Steve Downey. Got a little out of control. Well, Rush called it right into it. You see him waved his hand like, come on, try it again. Well, last time, Steve had the lane. Not this time. Lenny Rouse, good position. You know, uh, Steve had an opportunity to kick the ball to Mark Brown in the middle, right about half court, and I'm sure he would have gotten it back. But, uh, of course, Steve's still remembering the play before. And he checks out of the Siena lineup replaced by Grizzulis. I wonder why. <laughs> Motion offense being run right now by Lemoyne. This is Haas. This to Barnes, to Pittick. Pittick played by Herter. Bad pick and roll, nothing there. Good defense by Gazoulis. Haas takes the jumper. It's no good. And a rebound controlled by no one. Seattle will get it. Lemoyne ought to really try and isolate Roush on Grizzoulis because Roush much more mobile, a little bit bigger than Andy, and uh, Grizzoulis not the presence that Steve Downey is size-wise. I think uh, Roush could uh, have his way because he could certainly go outside, too, and take that 15, 16-footer. 
Andy, of course, with the bad leg, uh, somewhat immobile out there on the perimeter. And they need a couple of buckets here in the final minute, so you'd think they might isolate him. Paul Rooney wears number 44 for a moment. He just checked into the ball game. Hello, it was a lot past battle in that time. A little too tall. Mark Brown trying to find Matthews on the weak side. Sienna loves that play. And they had it, too. He yeah. was wide open. Mark, a uh, little too much juice on that one. And Mike Dean just said wide open, just as you did, Kevin. He was there. We're running out of space to put X's next to Lee Matthews' name here in the first half, though. 35 seconds to go. The shot clock is one second away, so LeMoyne can just about milk it for the last shot. LeMoyne has to shoot sometime, and there's a turnover. Ball fumbled by Buckholz. Mark Brown in the middle. Gives it up to the left side. Cutting Grazulis nicely to the basket. Excellent layout pass by Mark Brown. Yeah, an excellent timing. Mark gave it up early, so Andy could gather himself and lay it up and in. 52-35. LeMoyne will get the last shot if they can break the timeline here. Barnes does, goes past Mark Brown to the basket, lay it off to Rooney, and a foul out of control called against Barnes. Seattle will get it with one second remaining. That looked like the Tyson fight there with the 14 count in the backcourt. <laughs> well, with the shot clock off, I mean, a lot of folks refer to that now, and you look up and it's, it's blank, of course, because when the morning got possession, it was less than 45 seconds ago in the half. Look for the alley-oop all the way to Matthews. Why not? Schroeder will throw it in. Here comes a lob for Robinson. He was being bumped a bit as he went. LeMoyne makes the interception. And Robinson may have been injured a bit, and this could be significant because this, in many ways, nothing much more than a practice game. Robinson is underneath the Siena basket. Greg Dash Rashnaw, the trainer for Siena, is on the scene. Mike Dean now realizing it. I think they might have banged these going for the uh, going for the pass. There you see Robinson. A little surprised by the play. I, I thought Matthews was down inside the paint. I thought they would have just thrown it the length of the court and tried to alley oop. That time uh, Robinson drew three or four defenders there, and uh, somewhat a risky play. Indeed. Well, we've come to the half of tonight's presentation of Siena basketball here on Channel 45, and at the half, Siena leads Lemoyne by a score of 52 to 35. We'll be back with tonight's halftime show in just a moment. Local presentation of Game of the Week, Siena Basketball, is made possible through member support and by Avis Used Car Sales, retailers of a professionally maintained fleet of well-equipped rental cars. From one fussy owner to one smart buyer, Avis Used Car Sales. Hi, this is John Grinney along with Jim Brennan, and I think most people out there are aware the biggest high school basketball game of the year in Section 2 is the Class A Championship game. And for the third consecutive year, we'll be broadcasting that game live from the Glens Falls Civic Center on March 6th at 8 p.m. We've seen some great players up there from both the Big Ten and the Suburban Council, some great teams, and they've been good games over the last couple of years, so probably be a good one this year. That's a good bet. It should be another class, and we certainly hope you've got plans to join us. Mark your calendar, March 6th, live, 8 p.m. Great moments from Austin City Limits. Olympic National Park contains a rich variety of wildlife within its many life zones. Join Marty Stauffer as he takes an Olympic odyssey. The ocean shores, rainforests, and glacier peaks support some fascinating forms of wildlife. Come visit one of our most spectacular national parks on Wild America. Member-supported public television, WMHX, Channel 45. We're back now at halftime at the Alumni Recreation Center. Tonight's Santa College basketball presentation here on TV 45. The Saints lead it 52 to 35. And a big reason why you're able to sit home and watch this game live on TV 45 
the gentleman standing right next to me, the general manager of our station, Bill Haley. And Bill, it, it's been just fantastic to be affiliated with Siena the past few years. But you know and I know, you know a lot better than I, the cost involved and the commitment you people have made. And that's why on occasion we ask the folks to get involved. We made a commitment to local collegiate sports when this station went on the air, which was in September of 1987. And we said, we think there's a place for it. Nobody else is doing it in this area. And of course, Siena is now, I think, the premier college team. Uh, we've done some RPI hockey. We've done a lot of other sports in this area. We'd like to do more, but this year we had to commit to Siena because we got the underwriting to allow us to do most of these games. Now, we did all of the home games. If you want to be part of uh, continuing this in the spirit of this into next year, then call us now at 1-800-477-WMHC. John, I, it's so loud in here, I'm not sure I can keep this going for very long. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, but the, your membership is extremely important to this station to be able to do this kind of sport. Now, the underwriters do a good part of it. You do the rest of it. If you joined last year or the year before, maybe it's renewal time. Maybe it's time for an additional gift. Uh, maybe it's time to take out a gift membership for someone else in your family. 1-800-477-WMHT. Pledge in any amount. You make it $60 and charge it. We'll see that you get one of these Game of the Week t-shirts. I know, I know you mentioned in the pregame segment that we did that you were you were threatening to put that shirt on. I did put it on. It okay. looks terrific. Okay. You can have it. $60 membership. We'll see that you also get Capital Magazine every month for a whole year with that membership. I hope you can hear me. I can't hear myself. 1-800-WMH-18477. Let's start it again. 1-800-477-WMHC. I believe it's on your screen. That's the number to call to make your pledge. I'm almost beginning to hear myself. I can almost stop shouting and screaming. I'm sure it must have sounded like I was. The Capital Magazine again. This just came at uh, my home today. It's for the month of March. You can have this 12 issues with your pledge of $35 or more. Uh, you can use any one of the major credit cards if you're calling in $60 or whatever your amount is, you can charge it. And uh, we'll send you the, uh, the nice blue Game of the Week in honor of uh, John and the whole team here, the Game of the Week t-shirt, folks, with 45 up here, in the, it's up here in the corner someplace, WMHX. And we're, we're the station that brings you collegiate sports. Support it now with your call, 1-800-477-WMHD. And not only collegiate sport, as Bill pointed out in our pregame analysis tonight, uh, we're going to be bringing you once again, I believe for the fourth consecutive year, the Class A Section 2 championship game from the Glens Falls Civic Center this coming Tuesday night. That's always a terrific ball game. And we'll have it live simulcast on both Channel 17 and 45. Again, part of the sports commitment that you've seen shown to you by the people at WMHX over the past several years. And I know, I, for one, I'm very, very thankful for that. And I hope you people share that thought sitting at home in the comfort of your living room tonight. Very cold and blustery night, as Bill said, walking across the field here tonight. It was a trip just to get here. And you didn't have to do that because you're able to watch the game at home live in the comfort of your living room. We've done a lot of special things for you, I think. If we look back to last year, John, you mentioned earlier the, the measles game, we call it, the one I think you went to Utica to do. Uh, no fans in the stands for that game. But you all were able to watch it in the comfort of your homes because of WMHX. We went out of our way some extra dollars last year. To, now we're doing a little bit better. We've got some great underwriters, uh, people who are helping us out to do this. They pay part of the freight. You do the rest when you call in your pledge. 1-800-477-WMHT. That's that call that you can make right now to guarantee that this kind of uh, sports programming is going to continue on WMHX. And Siena basketball over the past couple years has become a happening. You see this building packed all the time, and a lot of folks that can't get tickets, it's great to have this option to sit home and watch such quality basketball. And I might add again, what a great job our crew does. We're very proud of that. But again, it only can happen when you help us out because this is not commercial television. It is educational television. And I know in recent years, the government has cut back on its funding and off lot bills put some financial pressure on, you, on your ability to do your jobs and that's we don't ask that often but tonight we are asking yeah. you, you folks to show your support it is very important John we're we're jumping the gun a little bit on festival which starts officially Thursday night we're trying to raise 2,500 new members for our WMHT and WMHX you can really get us off to a great start tonight with your call and your pledge of support festival officially Thursday night and it goes on for a little over two weeks but you can be part of it. We'll be up there in Glens Falls next week on Tuesday night. That's, again, part of our commitment. If you want to respond in any way, whatever you can afford, senior citizens and students, $15, $35 or more gets you Capital Magazine. 
and the, the seniors get it as well with that $15 pledge, $60 again, and you get this T-shirt that I'm wearing. Not the exact one, but one just like it. One size fits all. Thanks for joining us, Bill. John, thank you. I got it to half tonight at the Arc. Siena leads Lemoyne at 52 to 35 by 17 points. Let's go back to the table right now and Jim Brennan. Thank you, John. Uh, Siena, as you mentioned, with the big 17-point lead. Kevin, uh, one statistic that jumps out, Siena had 22 field goals, Lemoyne just 14. And of Siena's 22, they had six from three-point range, and Lemoyne just had one. So uh, obviously, Siena doing the job from the floor tonight. And uh, the big key, I think, has been inside. Lee Matthews has just been uh, a runaway train inside. Well, certainly, Lemoyne has held their own, I think, uh, when Lemoyne was playing offense. But down the defensive end, I think Siena's size and talent has really uh, done a number on Lemoyne. They just uh, don't have enough guns to match up. And uh, certainly, that's uh, creating problems for that Lemoyne defense. Uh, Siena, in effect, almost getting any shot they wish, having pretty good success on the second shots, too. You think in the second half, Mike Dean might do something uh, different, try a few things that uh, he might like to uh, spring on Canisius or Manhattan Saturday night? Well, certainly this is a tune-up game. He's been using the pressure uh, most of this first half. I think uh, we'll see that subside a little bit. I think the other thing that'll white work on Mike's mind, he had a big injury, it looked like, before the half. Robinson went down, he's had some problems. And uh, I think, Mike, if they can maintain this 17-point lead or even build on it, I think you're gonna see a lot of uh, other Siena players in there, maybe a lot of uh, second team or some of the friends. I think he'd like to get Mike Brown sometime, Rizoulis and some of the others. Yeah, we haven't gotten any word yet on the extent of Jeff Robinson's injury. Hopefully it's nothing more severe than a Charlie horse, because maybe they collided, uh, hit knees or something, and going for the loose ball at the end of the first half, but we'll see. Uh, if Robinson gets any time here in the second half once the teams return to the floor. Again at halftime, Siena leading Lemoyne by the score of 52 to 35. We'll be back with more halftime activities from the Alumni Recreation Center right after this. Local presentation of Game of the Week, Siena Basketball, is made possible through member support and by a grant from the Peacock Companies, developing and managing the capital region's business addresses. Ranching in America is a business unlike any other. More than a job, it is a way of life. Visit some of the largest and oldest ranches in the West, from New Mexico and Nevada to Wyoming and Hawaii, and meet the modern-day ranchers, that special breed of people who still make their living off the land. The real West and a very real way of life. Vanishing breeze. Olympic National Park contains a rich variety of wildlife within its many life zones. Join Marty Stauffer as he takes an Olympic odyssey. The ocean shores, rainforests, and glaciered peaks support some fascinating forms of wildlife. Come visit one of our most spectacular national parks on Wild America. This is your Operation Earth Station, WMHX, Channel 45. Local presentation of Siena Basketball has been made possible through member support and by your Chevy Geo Network dealers, offering the all-new 1990 Geo Storm, your Chevy Geo Network dealers, the dealers who care. Two for 31 overall. We're back now at halftime in the Alumni Recreation Center on the campus of Siena College. There's the score, 52 to 35. That represents the largest margin Siena has had in that first half. And uh, Siena's shooting has been the big factor. Siena's shooting a tremendous 22 of 31. That's 71%. And in the home run ball, they're 6 for 9, 67%. And when you shoot like that, you're going to beat a lot of clubs. To the Siena season, one of the big keys to the Siena season has been... Well, certainly the, they've been having their way with this Lemoyne defense. Uh, 
Siena able to come down, move the ball around, get almost any shot they wish. And again, I think it's the size and the talent of Siena really creating problems. Uh, Lemoyne really needs to come out here, I think, and uh, try to pick away at this lead. I don't think they want to get into an all-out running game, or otherwise they'll be at... Uh, they're going to run into a, a further deficit here. Well, Lee Matthews is eight for nine from the floor, and you know he's just gotten it done so easily inside. Downey three for five. That means the two players that have played center for this club this year are eleven for fourteen, and, and virtually all of them have been at point blank range. They, they almost can't miss type of shot. I think we got to point out too. We just saw briefly in the picture there, number fourteen in white, Jeff Robinson, who's out taking uh, some warm up shots and appears to be none the worse for wear after that uh, injury to his left knee at the. Last play of the first half. Seems to be all right, though. You have to be a tad concerned when you see a player of that magnitude go down in what is, in many ways, a practice game for both clubs. Uh, both of these teams have aspirations beyond the regular season on their respective levels. And there's a look at Robinson, who was honored, of course, the pregame ceremonies tonight for being the all-time leading scorer in the school. He is now number seven on assists. He came in tonight tied with Russell Clark. He needed nine rebounds tonight to pass Nelson Richardson to become the eighth leading rebounder in Siena College history. Probably the most versatile player ever to play at this school. And you realize that uh, the categories such as rebounds imply a big man. He's excellent from downtown, three-point range, all-time leading scorer, assist man. Does so many things well and has for four years. And it's in many ways sad that he had his worst year as a senior. There's no question Jeffrey, in particular from a shooting point of view, had a terrible year this year. And this after being named the most valuable player a year ago in the ECAC North Atlantic Conference. And uh, this year, an awful lot was expected of Jeff coming in. And he had himself a pretty solid all-around campaign in many ways. But certainly his shooting was well below average, never getting up to the 40% mark all season. Well, of course, Siena had their woes outside of Bruce Schroeder early in the season. Uh, none of the starters were really uh, hitting that well. I think a lot of the teams upped that defensive pressure. Of course, they played a lot of road games, and that made it tough. And uh, quite frankly, they've just struggled a little bit because, as you mentioned, John Jeffries had some wide-open opportunities that in the past he's canned and just hasn't come through this year. But I'm sure he'd like to uh, have a Big Mac tournament and go out with a bang. Well, I think if Siena's going to make any noise in the Mac, it's going to be, obviously, from the perimeter. That's uh, the strength of their game. And Robinson at 39%, and Herter at 37 and Mike Brown at 37 uh, Those are three guys that you'd like to see shoot a little bit better come tournament time. And Jeffrey, certainly off tonight, has seemingly got his shot back. We're very happy, of course, that the MAC tournament is coming this way for the first of three consecutive years to the Knickerbock Arena. But the MAC tournament committee is in need of additional volunteers to assist with providing time and energy to run the hospitality areas at the four local hotels, which will be housing the incoming teams. If you feel in any way you can provide some assistance, please call the Albany County Convention and Visitors Bureau at 434-1217 and ask for Joanne. Your help would certainly be much appreciated. That number again, 434-1217 and ask for Joanne. We certainly thank you for very much, very much for any consideration you can give to that announcement. Siena has the ball on a 17-point lead as we start the second half of action. Schroeder is posted up in a pass meant for Schroeder from Downey. And Schroeder had vacated his position. Donnie did not see it. He's got a turnover to start the second half by Siena. Pretty good man-to-man -man defense that time by the Dolphins. This is Roush taking the ball away. Lob pass inside. Excellent play. This has had to be drawn up inside. Hits the buckle so easily. Roush, an excellent passer. He does an awful lot of things well. That's an understatement. He really is a versatile player. Can play inside, outside. Can rebound, handle the ball. That play just went so easily. You just know it had to be drawn up on the, on the chalkboard inside. Here's Downey with the offensive rebound. Gets it to Robinson for the jump shot. That's counted, and he's been fouled on the shot. Well, there's another second shot. Kept the opportunity alive, and uh, Robinson drilled it. Foul number 23, Russell Jeff with 13 points. Second leading score this year in the club, but just under 15 points a game. Third rebounder at 5.2 per game. Leads the team in steals at 47. And completes the three-point play to give him 14 points on the night. He and Matthews, of course, having big nights. Matthews was 17. In the first half, Len Rouse, the only double-figure scorer for the Dolphins, he had 10. Siena in the matchup zone again. And Roush again going for that pass. That time Schroeder, not to be denied, poked it away, anticipated it, 
Bob pass ahead of Robinson. He gives it to a cutting down. He is short jumper, no good. Rebound Barnes. And Lemoyne has the numbers. Rouse was wide open and calling for the ball. Rouse out of Bishop Ludden High School in Syracuse. Outside shot by her Husky. No good. Goes over the top of the backboard. So Siena will get possession. And that's one that Lemoyne has to hit there. He came off the screen, was open for a split second. Prisoulis is in now for Matthews for Siena. Siena by 18. Mark Brown gets to Grisoulis, back to Mark. Inside his shoulder to the basket, laid up and in. Well, that was a design play. They moved the ball around and post up Schroeder and it's had great success on that uh, play this season. Siena is playing against Lemoyne, much like Fordham played against Siena. Able to get the ball inside almost to the will. Here's a steal by Siena. Brown and Robinson playing catch. Mark Brown will go off the glass and can't get it down. Rebound to Roush. His baseball pass thrown ahead to her Husky. Back to a jump shooting Buckholz who scores. Buckholz has a nice Ready? shot. We told you Roush was an outstanding baseball player and you can see that pass coming out. He looked the, <laughs> the part. Yeah, he certainly made that play. Uh, that, that lead pass really beat Sienna's pressure. Roush has great poise also. Well, he's got a sense of command. He can just see he knows how to play. And he, as you said, Kevin, he lets the game come to him. Doesn't try to do things he's not capable of doing. Mark Brown with an pass to Schroeder, and there's drawing the charge, Lenny Roush. And if there's something he hasn't shown us tonight, I can't think of it, because uh, again, he continues to impress at both ends. It's three on Schroeder. He's the first player in the game to pick up three. Mike Dean looks incredulous on that, but it looked like a good call. We'll see it again here. Schroeder gets it on the baseline, and yeah, Roush. I got that one. Stationary position. Yeah, Mike was really upset, and that seemed to be a pretty obvious call. Of course, again, a lot of coaches look for the next one. There's Roush with the 18-footer. Herder looks for the three. No good. Rebound is Lemoyne's. Barnes out and running. Two and one. Right side of her Husky slams it home. Excellent break and a good dish that time by Barnes. Shannon's right back in transition. Brown with the left-hand scoop shot. No good. Rebound. Grizzulis gets it back to Brown. Mark goes back to Grizzulis, posted up, now to Schroeder, takes the three. Herder entry to Downey. Well, Downey with a tremendous size advantage. He's got to knock that one home. Good job by Lemoyne. Very gutsy. Downey down that close, though. Nine times out of ten would be better off putting it up in the square instead of trying to hit it over the rim. Fourth foul on Schroeder was 16 and a half to play, and again, the... Uh, Game pretty much in Siena's way, but Schroeder will be out for at least the next seven or eight minutes. There's 16 and a half to play. He's got four personals. There's your score, Siena by 14. Good entry pass to Rouse and his move, excellent move. Lemoyne staff looking for a call. Rouse gets it back inside. Oh, beautiful shot. shot. Way to do it, Lenny. And a defensive stop here, and I think we'll see a Siena timeout. They've been struggling. Robinson and Brown playing catch in front of the Siena bench. Can't create anything, so Mark comes back outside. Well, as good as Roush is playing tonight, you'd like to see him play in a game where he's at forward, which would be a more natural position for him than center. Well, he passes well. He just, he's got a good sense of the game. Reminds a little bit of Larry Bird. There's Mark Brown misfiring again, but the rebound is back to Grizzulis. Brown will get his third shot off this trip, and he's not going to miss three of them. Well, the second opportunities and third opportunities just uh, doing damage to Lemoyne. Holding the ball now is John Haas, who started this game at guard. Haas, a freshman out of Syracuse. Hello. Boy, that's got to be a walk. Mike Dean just got walk as high as he's been since he played at Potsdam. That was a walk, but there was a foul that wasn't oh, right agree. before that. Got to be something, anything. <laughs> Give me a whistle over here. Barnes getting Robinson here. Excellent pass. Beautiful ball fake. Caught down and you're looking up front. Went back door and they got an easy two on that one. Buckholz opened up the game with three quick baskets and he's done it again here in the second half with three baskets in the opening seconds. 
There's a hot potato. Robinson finally controls down low to Brown. He can't even hit iron, and a foul is going to be called on Downey as he pulls down Buckles. That was a classic shot change by Len Rouse. He was changed it? Mark Brown's shot. As much as it's ever been changed. Rouse is doing an awful lot of things. Lemoyne doing a good job defensively. There's Rouse contesting the shot. Lemoyne with the inside position, and Downey over the top for the foul. Buckholtz has 14 points, and he has gotten three hoops in the opening five minutes of each half. And into the game averaging only six points a game. So he's having perhaps a career night here tonight as a freshman against Siena. And the one problem Lemoyne's going to have. Mark Brown with the tip, double tip call on the play. Well, I didn't see that one. I thought yeah. it was Lemoyne ball. The one problem Lemoyne's going to have, I think Roush gets a little tired. He's going to need a blow in a minute here. And uh, they're just an entirely different team with Roush on the bench. He takes one-minute blows, though, but uh, you're right. He was out a couple times in that first half. Here's Robinson posted against a much shorter Barnes and spins toward the hoop and was held. Jeff's got about six inches on Russell Barnes and used it that time. Number 23, Russell Barnes, third personal, second Lemoyne team foul. Robinson will shoot a pair at the line for the Saints. He has 14 points in the ballgame. The free throw shooting percentage has fallen off a little bit in the last couple of weeks, too. He was up around 80%, now down to about 75 as we take another look at it. The only really one he's missed tonight is the front end of a one-on-one. Sienna for the game now is only five for eight at the line, 0 for two and front ends of one-on-one. So the five of six and nine front ends of one-on-one. Rouse was calling for the ball, played by Matthews. There's that backdoor pass again. The idea was good to pass a bit misdirected that time to Buckholes. Here's Barnes stepping into a Robinson pass. Trying to Lee control. over there, taking a charge <laughs> over at press row. And taking it well, you might add. <laughs> Checking his computer. Well, that backdoor alley-oop has been open, what, four times here in the second half for LeMoyne? They've converted a couple of them. I think LeMoyne is really uh, try trying to make it a perfect pass. Is all they need to do is really get that ball about nine and a half feet anywhere near the rim, and they'll be able to lay it up and in. A couple of times they could have even gone downstairs with the pass, too, because it wasn't that wide open. Shinna by 14. They've got the ball 13 and a half to go in the contest. Mark Brown of the basket laid up. No good, but he was fouled on the shot. Foul oh, called on her, has her Husky. That's his first. Team's third. Let's take a look at it. Brown hacked on the arm. Mark has 10 points here tonight. Leads the club in scoring at 16.4. Camille 169 assists for the year. And during the course of the first half, became the all-time assist leader in Siena College history, eclipsing the career mark set by Matt Brady four years ago. And Mark has done it in three years. Russell Barnes catches the Rouch pass ahead of the field. Pulls it back out, though. As you pointed out before, were it not for Jeff Robinson, he would have had the school scoring record in three years, too. He needed 27 tonight to go past Eric Banks, who came into this year the all-time winning center scorer. There's a bad pass by Rouch. He's got close, so he needs another 15, and a uh, pretty good chance between tonight and Saturday, they'll get that many. Well, the crowd is quiet tonight. Uh, Lemoyne doing a good job keeping that Sienna running game intact. Mark Brown outside, two-pointer, no good, rebound. He's down to Edwards, throws the head to Roush on the wing, toward the basket, bumped by Robinson. Cross court to her Husky, had the three and passed it up. Probably would have been a good shot for Lemoyne. They're down 16 and need to make a few of those. The Husky made the only three-point Lemoyne had in the first half. Julius Edwards is yet to score. That's he with the ball right now. Did not start tonight. He's been a starter all year. Averages eight points a game. Pretty good Sienna man-to-man -man defense here. 
Shot clock at seven. Her Husky now forces one, no good. Rouse right there for the putback, and he's been fouled. Oh, good excellent hands. hustle. He was really screened out of that play almost, but great hustle. He stayed with it. He's going to have a three-point opportunity. I know Mike Dean has said he has had tremendous games each of the first two years he's played against you, and will make it three in a row. And rightly so, he's a tremendous player. He really can do a lot of things. He's having a game kind of reminiscent of Middleton had here with the University of Hartford. Pretty much doing what he wants inside. Free throw, no good. Robinson up above the iron, pulling down the board. Not too much movement here on offense for Siena. They're looking to post up Robinson. Lob into Jeffries, double team, but he was offensive foul. That's a tough call. Man's got to have the right to come down. Well, he's got to have a step to come down. And of course, Roush right in the thick of it, though. Oh, we'll have a look at that one. Let's see if we take a look at this now. That's a tough call. Yeah, that's a blocking foul, because as Grain that corner, when the offensive player is not, not looking, you need to give him a step to turn. He certainly has to have the right to come down. And uh, on the way down, that's when he bumped into Roush. Basket by Buckholz. Well, he's had himself a night. And Lemoyne doing a pretty good job. They're hanging in there. He has now tied Roush for the scoring lead on this club, 16 apiece. Lee Matthews has yet to score in this half after having a career high 17 in the first half. Mike Brown now checks in for Siena. Replacing Tommy Herter. And I got a feeling Mike's going to get it going tonight. Got one point in the first half. Here's Mark Brown with a wiener. No good. Rebound Matthews. Back up. And he's been fouled. Now, speaking of Mike Brown, not only has he not been scoring like he did last year, last couple of weeks he hasn't really been involved in the offense. Oh, has been in. They're going to give uh, Lee Matthews two shots on this. I thought it should have been a Comet foul. There you, there you see the foul. Lee's still on the ground. Pump fake, but they're going to give him two. Again, Lenny Roush got the one-minute uh, rest, and he's right back in it. The way they used to do it with you, wasn't it, Green Egg? Yeah, in and out real quick. Uh, mostly out. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of that out. Out and in real quick. Yeah. <laughs> There's some legendary stories about players that don't get much PT on that bench with other players teasing. Hey, coach wants you. <laughs> <laughs> and you get up in his face, he looks at you, what do you want? I was just wondering if it was okay if I went to the bathroom. <laughs> you got to be quick to add women situations like that. Or when the coach does want you, <laughs> only because they're out of towels. Or I towels. used to sit right next to the coach. He never had to look too far. And yeah, the kids that really want to play fight to get that spot right next to the coach. Haas misfires, rebound Matthew. And you do pay the price because you hear some things you get yelled at. For. Mark Brown for three. Got it. Well, too many weapons here. Sienna. 67-51, Siena's back up by 16 after Lemoyne made a little run there. Rouse goes cross court, now to Edwards, his jumper no good, Mike Brown with the board. Gets to Mark. Mark wanted to go to Downey, didn't have the angle. It's been one and out for Lemoyne the last couple of trips and they really can't get back into the game that way. There's a lob inside. Matthews again didn't control it. The ball finally controlled by Bobby Pittick. Mike Dean upset with Steve Downey asking him where he was on the offensive board. He's out by the foul line. That's where he was. <laughs> we were a little closer to that rebound than he was. Yeah, Downey got a couple hoops early in this ball game. It really has not been much of a factor since. Here's Roush inside. Downey goes for the block. Of course, Roush is shot very high. Here goes Robinson. 
Matched up against Pittick. They take the three over him, way off the mark. Rebound pulled down, weak side by Cunningham. Got a tough shot there at the time. And nine minutes to go in the ball game. Siena leads it by 16, if you just tuned in, for a live presentation of Siena basketball, our final home game for the Saints this year. Lemoyne being very patient here, moving the ball around. They can't afford to come up empty here. Here's Roush with a fadeaway jumper, gets it down. And there's the man that can fill it up. He's got 18 tonight. In a lot of different ways. I know Sien was involved in recruiting him. Is there any knowledge? Is it too late? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how deeply involved were they? I really don't know. Okay. I know that uh, he played on a very successful high school team, did he not? Lee Matthews with 20 now. Here's Mike Brown with a steal laid up and in. Nice play by Mike Brown. It almost looked like he got fouled, too. Yeah, sure did. I got it. No ducking. Siena by 18, timeout Lemoyne. Wake the bus driver up. <laughs> I'll tell you, another run like that, four or six points. And Let's take a look at the steal by Mike Brown, and he one times right up for the hoop. Excellent trap there. And oh, he got fouled. Yeah, he did. Glenn Rouse definitely got him across the arm on the shot. I think the officials were up the floor waiting for the action to come into the uh, front court. Of course, the excellent trap by Sienna, and uh, Lemoyne had nowhere to go but in the backcourt with it. Well, when you're having a down here like Mike Brown is, you don't even get calls on obvious fouls like that. Well, the other thing is Lemoyne has, has been effective against the Sienna pressure when Roush has been in the backcourt because they use Lenny's 6'6 six, six frame to kind of throw over the guard. But when Lenny hasn't been in the backcourt, uh, Lemoyne has struggled there also. Lee Matthews has 20 tonight. We mentioned his career high coming into this game had been 14. He had that on several occasions this year. He was capping off a sensational freshman year for Siena. That was Robinson at 16 and Brown at 15. Siena could put three guys over the 20-point mark tonight. I don't believe that's happened this year. Not three of them. Then a little, a little surprised that maybe Mike hasn't used a few of the other players here. Uh, Certainly not uh, not a total blowout, but certainly Sienna's been in command most of the way, 10 or 12 points. Right now they lead it by 18, and maybe a good time for some of the other guys to get a little run. I would think maybe the last five minutes. I'm ready. Yeah, Always there are, have been. There are five players on the bench who have yet to get in tonight at all. And Doc Leary's got to warm up, too. Probably the story of the five that hasn't played would be the situation of James Roberts, who seemed to be coming out of the season-long doghouse about five games ago, but now more entrenched than ever before. Three-point attempt by Haas, no good. Tipped up and in. We'll see what they credit that to. It could be either Rouch or Cunningham. Right, I'll go to Jim Cunningham. He needs it more than Rouch does. <laughs> Here's Mark Brown open for the jumper. No good. Rebound Rouch. Outlet pass and a dandy. To oh, double dribble. Count it, and he was fouled. Her Husky going to the basket. Her Husky. I don't know if he got another look at that. It looked like he double dribbled up at the top of the key. But excellent play by Roush and a good outlet pass. You know, Roush seems like the kind of guy he wouldn't care if he scored any points at all. He's very unselfish. Yeah. Fouls on Mike Brown. Let's watch it. Well, it looked like he might have cradled him. that dribble a little bit there, Kevin. <laughs> Too much air in the basketball. Been a lot of high dribbles tonight. The Husky no good, and the foul is going to be called underneath against Cunningham, his third. Good hustling play, though, by Cunningham. They really need to make some things happen. Number five against Lemoyne. Sienna's at their quota for the half with six. Now Lemoyne comes with the full court pressure. Sienna by 14. It's been one of those games where it's not been a blowout, and yet you've had the feeling Sienna's been in total control the whole night. There's a reach-in foul again against Cunningham, and quickly he has four. Let him play. Shorter also playing with four personals, so 
it almost looks like Cunningham was in pretty good position there. He was playing Schroeder's left shoulder, and that's where the pass came. Robinson will trigger. Has nothing. Gets to Mark Brown. He's in the trap. Gets to Schroeder. Entry pass down to Robinson. Lay it up and good. I thought Lemoyne had a chance to double team Brown there, but Cunningham was kind of weak with it. The Husky has been fouled by Robinson as he goes to the basket. Jeffrey well, trying to get back in time. Well, Sienna just getting beat down the floor. Good hustling play by Robinson. To prevent the easy two. Lemoyne really has been successful. Here comes Robinson trying to get all ball. Boy, who think he did? <laughs> Excellent hustling play by Robinson. The Husky, we mentioned before, one of the big time scorers in this club has bricked up a couple of free throws in a row. 0 for 2 at the line, sophomore. I don't believe that's Brooklyn Browns, though, is it? Not sure where that is located. Back comes Krasoulis. Back out to Mike Brown. Starts a drive. His jumper, no good. He's got bodies good. down. And Bruce Schroeder's fall out. Just one of those nights for Bruce. Everything, every time he tried to turn around, he drew a foul. Checks out with only four points. Come in averaging 11 3 a game. So Schroeder Mike checks D. out. Uh, Mike. Two words from Mark D. Ciola, the official. Who's not the one who made the call, but <laughs> he's the closest one. Yeah, right. He's got a striped shirt, he's got a whistle. That's close enough. He's one of the bad guys. <laughs> You'd never know he was such a fun-loving guy, would you? <laughs> That's the way coaches well, I'll are. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to guard Schroeder tomorrow in practice. He's going to be like a bear <laughs> because he just didn't get an opportunity to play tonight. Really in foul trouble the whole way. First one and one of the night for Lemoyne. Cunningham takes it, doesn't get it down. Oh, and great hustle. Lenny Rouse keeping it alive inside before finding Gazoulis comes out of the pack on him. He's got his man sealed off inside and lays it in. There's the move you were looking for, Jimmy. It looks so easy, and they finally went to it. Yeah, you would think it'd be open most of the night because he's got such a tremendous size advantage over the Lemoyne front line, but it's been a quiet offensive night for Downey. Not a packed house here tonight. 27-72 the crowd. Mark Brown with a steal, and he'll get the layup. And Mark moves in another gear. He has 17 now for the night. Gets above his average. Santa by 19. Biggest lead of the night. 77 to 58. Once again, there's that Rouse cross-court pass to her Husky. Rouse now gets it back in the lane. Fakes the pass and kisses it off glass. Well, he's got a lot of moves. The head fakes, the hand fakes, ball fakes. He froze Jeff Robinson. I think he was going to throw it out to the wing. But not our cameraman. <laughs> There's a good pass inside of Grizzulis. Boy, it looks like he got hacked. And no call. Wow. You can hear it. There's Mike Brown now with the turnover. Grizzulis will want this one. No, back out to Mark Brown for three. Looking for 20. Put it down. Get the warm-ups. I'll tell you. That's the word, Kevin. Warm up the bus. Warm up the bus. Get the warm-ups. <laughs> Mark Brown has been impressive. I know he come under fire earlier in the year. Trying to do too much, if you will, but I, I, I like the way Mark plays. I think he's been very consistent, probably the most consistent player outside of Schroeder all year for Siena. He really adds a dimension, and uh, I think he, he enables Siena to win a lot of ball games that in the past they probably wouldn't have been in. Well, he certainly made an exciting team a little bit more exciting with his flair with the ball, and that's something that guys are just born with, and uh, he was fortunate that he could do some things with a basketball that most people can't. 
And I think he's fortunate to play for a guy like Mike Dean, who, who likes the guards, likes the point guards, and uh, likes to get it up and down the court, if you will. Yeah, I don't think he'd last in a program where he had to walk the ball up the floor and make four passes before the shot went up. Got three players tonight with 20 points on the button. Mark Brown now, Lee Matthews, as well as Lenny Roush for Lemoyne. Well, against Siena, I think just with too many weapons for Lemoyne, but certainly Lemoyne has uh, come in here and uh, not backed off Siena. They've really given him a hard fourth ball game. I think the one thing they want to do now is continue to run their patterns. They're probably not going to win this one. I know they're not going to win this one, but I think it's a good game for them to keep working on their offense. Siena by 20. Russell Barnes goes cross court. This is Haas back outside now to her Husky. Back to Barnes. Buck holds and Rouse posting up and Rouse gets it. He scores. And a great catch in traffic. Well, Moyne continues to move the ball pretty well. They haven't shot all that well tonight, but they do move the ball well on the offensive zone. Rouse has just, believe it or not, committed his first foul of the night. And, you know, he's been active, too. Yeah. He does a pretty good job defensively. He's a smart defender. Can't say enough about him. Watch for the reach in here. Wow. And Lenny was right. It was all ball. Mark Brown for the one-on-one. -on -one. Lenny even doing a little officiating. Taking over my job, Jimmy. Boy, there aren't <laughs> too many guys that uh, can do it as well, Kevin. <laughs> I think we're going to see the Officiating uh, Association give Kevin a striped shirt at the end of the year. <laughs> the Golden Whistle Award. Well, I think it's about time to get Mark Brown and Robinson and some of the guys out of this one. Brown getting closer to becoming the second all-time winning scorer at Siena College. He needs five more points in this ballgame. Siena by 20, 4.15 remaining. Let it fly, Lenny. <laughs> Going toward the hoop now as Haas drops it off inside. Nice move by Buckholz. Good pass, too. Well, I gotta believe he's at a career high. We don't have their numbers, but he's got 18 points, coming averaging six. He's a freshman. There's Herter inside, no good. Rebound. Roush keeps it alive. Finding control by Lemoyne. Credit that to, to Roush, though. And credit to Lemoyne still hanging in this ballgame to Roush, too. Here's Brown with another steal. And credit it deuce to Brown. And then with the left hand. He did work. <laughs> well, I think it's about time he gets over there on the cushion. Santa yeah. up by 20. The one thing they don't want to risk here is injury. Rouse, excellent entry pass. Terrific pass to Buckholz. He's got to have a triple-double or whatever they call those things. He's got a lot, a lot. <laughs> Good stuff. Brown with that basket. Could have given him 26 for the night. Didn't get it down. I believe he'll check out now. Ryder, Downey, and Matthews waiting to check back in. Sienna coming back with two starters. Herter went to the bench. Brazilis went to the bench. And Mark Brown. The third one. It is Mark Brown. I go over there with the Sienna trainer. After that last layup, it looked like he was in a little bit of distress. I don't think yeah, it did. It looked like he took a bad step. Shannon by 18. Her Husky with an NBA three-pointer. No good. Tapped up brilliantly by Roush. Her Husky gets it back, and Fonnie Matthews, using the inside position, gets the rebound, but Roush kept it alive above Matthews. And Matthews had position. Robinson to the basket, laid up. No good. Rebound. <laughs> Lenny Roush. And don't step in and take a charge here because the officials have put the whistles away. <laughs> Here's Sir Husky going for the three. Rebound Robinson. Jeff throws ahead of Downey. Trying to make the catch. Can't do so. And it'll be Sienna Ball. Boy, it's got to be surprising. I mean, it, it, Sienna has got four players on the bench that haven't played yet. And they're up by 18 with 225 to play. Joey Middleton, Dave Foster, James Roberts. And Bill Linden have yet to play. And again, the big thing with the MAC tournament coming up, again, you don't want any injuries. And 
Mike Brown for two, no good. Rebound comes down to Buckles. Right up over the top of Lee Matthews. Knocked away by Matthews. Robinson has it, gets it to Mike Brown toward the basket, lay it up and in. Well, a good lead pass, and Brown got the easy two. Now Tommy Herter getting into the check back in. Downing with the board. Here goes Robinson, and he's fouled on the way to the basket before he gave it up. Fouls called against Pittick. And if you're Joe Middleton, just check in right now. Run down to the table. <laughs> this will be Robinson's last free throws here. Tom Herter is at the table waiting to check in for Robinson. And Jeffrey right now with 18, and he'll get a couple here, a one and one. Oh, he's gonna get him two? No, oh, wait, he's one and one. one. Gets the first one. I know that makes you happy, Grant. Shooting at that big ring there, he got the big bounce. Needs this one for 20 in his final game at the arc ever. Bingo. That'll be it. Dead ball, they'll bring him out. Should get a great round of applause for four great years. That's Sienna Collins. Jeffrey Robinson. 1,630 points. Hopes to play several more games. Certainly has one more scheduled this coming Saturday night at the Knickerbocker Arena. Job well done. And if they get to that Sunday night game, he can make <laughs> Sienna forget about some of his shooting woes early in the season. Entry pass in the basket inside by number 35, Andy Bechtel. Here's Ryder. Double dribble called on Ryder. Foster is in. Still no Roberts. by Pittick, three-point goal for LeMoyne. Ball stripped away from Mike Brown. And here's another three-pointer. Good. LeMoyne's going to make this final respectable. John Haas knocks it down. Give him credit. They're really battling. They're only down 14 with a minute to play. There's a push by Haas. Mike Brown will shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. The foul of number 21, John Haas, is third person. Well, Sienna, as we mentioned, will be back in action Saturday night against the winner of the Manhattan Canisius game. Second game of the nighttime doubleheader after LaSalle plays in the seven o'clock. That'll be an exciting couple of games Saturday night. Albany native, Delmar native, I should say, Don, John Parabroom into the lineup out of Delmar. Where's number 13, Full Moyne. Mike Brown will shoot the front end of a one on one. Get it? Mike had a very disappointing sophomore year after leading the Santa freshman in scoring a year ago. He's averaging less than six points a game this year. Has seven tonight. And his time is really diminished also. And his confidence with it. 90 to 74. I'm not sure what that was. But Tommy Herber has it. So get it up there. Get it up and Lenny will get it, but Lenny's not in the game. Mike Brown misses. A foul is going to be called against Siena on the offensive boards. He's going to be Herter over the back. Fouls on Herter. We'll walk the other end for a one-on-one -on -one now for Bob Pritik. Pritik makes the front end. Will earn the bonus. 90 to 75. Siena by 15 with 40 seconds remaining as the crowd starts to file out. But it gets them both. Picked up a quick five points here in the second half. Herder goes inside to Linden. The basket has been fouled. He'll shoot twice. Seldom used freshman. Walk on out of Winston, Connecticut. Again, many people 
question why this uh, why these two teams would continue to play and I think a game like tonight does a lot of good for both these clubs as we see Linden going in and drawing the foul. Linden's first one is no good. Second one no good as well. This is what is classified as garbage time. There's Jim Ryder with a jumper, no good. Half up by Foster. Linden's got it, misfires. Foster's got it back. He's been hammered. Ball goes out of bounds. Seattle will maintain it. Eight, Eight more seconds, seconds and uh, hopefully without incident. Yes. This is Mike Brown. Tries to go to Herter. And a foul is going to be called on Herder with three seconds remaining. Just lengthen tonight's presentation a bit. Let's take a look at this. Brown with a lazy pass. Well, loose balls, players are conditioned to go after them. So uh, you really can't fall Herder for committing the foul there. And here's the Delmarian, John Perabrun, out of Bethlehem Central. Misfires on the front end. Foster pulls it down, and thankfully the game will end. Tommy Herter's bomb misfires. And the final score, Siena has won it. 90 to 76 over outclass Lemoyne here tonight. Lemoyne put up a good battle, but uh, obviously just simply did not have it in the manpower situation to stay with Siena. Again, the final, you see it on your screen. Siena wins it 90 to 76. We'll be back with our post game show, including an interview with Siena basketball coach. Mike Dean and the all-time winning scorer of Siena College history, Jeffrey Robinson, in just a moment. Local presentation of Game of the Week, Siena Basketball, is made possible through member support and by Napa, with locations in Albany, Cohoes, East Greenbush, Latham, Mechanicville, Ravina, and Troy. Napa, all the right parts in all the right places. And by Pepsi-Cola Albany Bottling Company, makers of regular, diet, and caffeine-free Pepsi, Slice, Mountain Dew, and Mug Root Beer. Our pride in the community is reflected in our support of local school athletics. Pepsi, a generation ahead. It's a festival of the very best of public TV. March 1st through the 18th on member-supported WMHS. This is your Operation Earth Station, WMHX Channel 45. Uh, Lemoyne came in very gutsy. They hung in there 90-76. Was it what you were expecting? Well, Lenny Rouse played very well, and, and uh, you know, I think we got out in front in a comfortable lead, and it's hard to get our guys to, to stay as intense as they, they should, and certainly Lemoyne capitalized on that lack of intensity in the second half and hung in. Uh, I don't think the question of who was going to win was ever in doubt. I would have liked to have played a little better in the second half, but I, I can understand being a player just like you have, Kev, that sometimes uh, when you get out comfortable like that, you just you play the game to end the game, and you don't play as effectively as maybe you should. And, and uh, I'm a little disappointed in that because I would have liked to have a little more momentum going into the tournament and had everybody feel a little bit better. At the same time, though, uh, John Beeline's an excellent coach, and Lemoyne's a good Division II club, and, and uh, you know, they deserve a lot of credit for how they played today. You certainly got a scrappy team. They played pretty good man-to-man -man defense. I think your quickness and your size hurt them. Well, obviously, they don't have a, a big man, and then... Uh, Sometimes a 6'5 or 6'6 six, six big man can be more effective against a 7-footer for periods of time, but it, it, in terms of the overall rebounding and uh, the, act, the eventual outcome, you got to have size to win, and I think that was the difference in the basketball game. That along with uh, our, our guard play was far superior tonight than theirs, and so we come out on top, but they're a good club, and I, I, uh, I don't know if they're headed for the Division II playoffs or not, but certainly they're a, a team that could be that good, and Lenny Roush, as I said all along, is a guy that's 
killed us for three years, a guy we wish we had an extra scholarship for when the time was available for him to come out of high school. Uh, we didn't. He's a, a, a great basketball player, and he proves that each time we play him. Is it too late? It certainly is, and uh, I wish him the best in his senior year. Uh, I hope he gets 25 against us again next year so he can get an even 100, and we still win the basketball game. Now, we got four or five days before the MAC tournament Saturday night. You were talking uh, patience in the beginning of the year with this club. How do you feel going into the tournament? Do you think you got a legitimate shot? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know if we have a legitimate shot or not. Certainly, we, we, we uh, are expecting very good crowds. Uh, the first game is always the toughest to get by. And then, of course, if we are fortunate enough to win the first night, then we have to go out and play LaSalle. But I hope that our fans will come out and support us. I think we demonstrated against both Holy Cross and Fordham that we're a capable team when we're hitting on all cylinders. And tonight we tried to play a little man-to-man -man in case we had to use it. It's not our best defense, and uh, uh, it's certainly not the best defense to play against the club when you have superior talent than the other club. I, I think they had trouble all night long against the matchup, and uh, the game could have been obviously much more one-sided if we had gone to the matchup. That's our, our primary defense. And uh, that's what we're going to have to be effective in if we're going to win the tournament. Uh, I'm worried about winning the first night and hoping that there's a potential sellout. I think that would be great for the MAC tournament. I think it'd be great for our program. And uh, I certainly think it's within the realm of possibility. I hope we can not disappoint everybody and play well the first night, just well enough to win, and then see what happens. Well, best of luck. Thank you, Kevin. And now let's send it over to Jimmy Brennan. Let's get ready. Hi, with Jeff Robinson, 20 points tonight in his final game here at the Alumni Recreation Center. And Jeff, was it a, an emotional night for you at all? Yeah, it was an emotional night. This being my last game in the arc, I was real excited about playing. And right now I'm feeling a little sad that it was my last game. Obviously, you had a lot of personal success here, and the team did very well during your four years. Uh, is it the kind of thing that you remember for a long time? Yeah, it's the kind of thing I'm going to remember because uh, I think I only lost four games here since I've been here for the four years. So uh, it's something I'll never forget. And I always be appreciative to Sienna and the fans. We commented during the game that, you know, it was a little bit unfortunate for you that you had trouble shooting this year. Your percentage was as low as I think it's been in your career, but it seems to have picked up in the last couple of weeks. Do you feel confident now from outside going into the tournament? Yeah, I feel real confident now. Um, I've been working hard in practice so I could finish strong and go into the tournament strong. And I want to be on top of my game in the tournament and even after the tournament. Have you got a chance to shoot down there at all? What's, uh, what's it like? Uh, I like the floor. You get a lot of bounce off the floor. The rims are a little hard to get used to, but I think we'll play well. All right, Jeff, again, congratulations on not only tonight, but a great career. Thank you. All right, Jeff Robinson, Sienna's all-time leading scorer, who, of course, played his final home game here tonight. Let's go back to Kevin. Okay, thanks a lot, Jimmy. You're here with Lee Matthews. Lee, the freshman out of Buffalo. You come up big tonight. You had a big first half. Uh, did you feel uh, that you were going to have a big game tonight? Yeah, we concentrated on going down low so that put much so they wouldn't put much of an emphasis on Jeff and Mark during the, the game. It seemed like uh, maybe the game plan was to uh, run a few more alley oops for for yourself and uh, maybe for Downey. Was that part of the game plan? It wasn't really part of the game plan, but when during the game Mark sees it open, he'll just throw it up for us. Of course, you're coming to the tail end of your freshman year. How do you feel about the way you've played? Of course, with Downey out in the, in the mid-season uh, there, you got to play a lot. You came through. How do you feel about it? I feel pretty good about it, and I believe I gained the experience for next year, so I won't make as many mistakes next year or in the future. We were talking before uh, with Coach Mike Dean about the MAC tournament. What's the attitude of the team, do you think, going into the MAC tournament? Do you think you got a legitimate shot? I think we have a, a legitimate shot, and we'll use this game as momentum to carry into the game. Also, this is Jeff's last, last get couple of games coming up, so I believe he'll be playing pretty well also. Well, congratulations on a great ball game, and good luck in the tournament. Thank you. That was Lee Matthews, and now let's send it back to John Graney. Uh, I'm pleased for him. He's been the mainstay of the we're back here now on the court uh, to support, sort of put a wrap on tonight and the season along with uh, Bill Haley, the general manager of TV45, which has been tremendous in, in producing and directing these games over the past several years. And Bill, I, I know it's been a tremendous success to have Sienna as part of your package. And a lot of the folks out there that have enjoyed it, not only this year but in previous years, could now show their appreciation in a very appropriate manner. Well, we've had great reaction to these games, and uh, I know a lot of people out there appreciate it, and then many of them are already members, but there's an opportunity for you to become a member of WMHX. The, uh, the friends, you can be a friend, and you can call us now with a pledge of support by, by dialing 
1-800-477-WMHT. Now, the 1-800 line, John, was uh, having a little trouble earlier tonight. If you had any difficulty, you can try it again. I understand it's working well right now. 1-800-477-WMHT. You can pledge in any amount, but if you can make it $60 and charge it using one of the four major charge cards, you can have this Game of the Week uh, T-shirt, which you've had specially made, color blue, the WMHX colors, and uh, you can be joining during festival. Actually, we're jumping the gun a little. Festival starts Thursday night. You'll get this program guide within Capital Magazine. This is the uh, March guide, and that will come to you every month uh, for a whole year with your membership. Now, if you're a senior citizen or a student, it can be $15. Anybody uh, else starting at $35 or more, you'll get the program guide, and Capital's a great, a great uh, value for you because it tells you about everything that's going on here in our region, including all the sporting events, too, and all the, uh, all the arts and performances, things you really want to go to. So it's a great thing for you to get, and you're supporting the programs you like, the sports here. For example, next Tuesday night, we're going to be back up in Glens Falls again, John, for the Section 2 uh, Class A uh, uh, Boys Finals. I think it's been pretty obvious the coverage of local sports has been unprecedented in the Capital District to match what's been shown on TV 45 the past several years, and, and I'm very proud to have been part of it. And again, we solicit your support. We don't do this too terribly often. And when we do, we do expect that uh, perhaps if you feel just uh, awfully good about what we've brought you over the past several years to show your support and contact the people at TV 45 as well as 17. That game, by the way, will be simulcast next Tuesday night, the Class A championship game live from Glens Falls. We'll have it all for you beginning at 8 o'clock. And, uh, Bill, it's certainly been a pleasure to talk to you again here tonight. And Siena basketball has been a lark for me. I know that. Well, thank you. You, you and uh, everybody have, have just done a great job. Uh, Mike Heffler and the whole gang here, our whole uh, production crew, I think, have uh, just uh, been excellent. The reaction we get, and we ask, we often put on this reaction line program, and there's a number of people can call, and they invariably tell us what a great job they feel uh, all of you do here on uh, Channel 45 Sports. Well, there is, this is your opportunity. 1-800-477 takes just about a minute to become a member of WMHX. Support the programming you like, and that's the way to do it. Go to the phone, dial 1-800-477-WMHX. It's free from wherever you're calling, wherever within our viewing, whether you're watching on cable or wherever it might be, you become an annual member of WMHX. 1-800-477-WMHX. You can charge. You can put it in installments. Uh, do it in just about any way you want. And they only need a few simple things, your name, the address, the amount you want to pledge, that's just about it. And uh, you can decide the way you want to do it. So it's a simple thing to do to, to decide to uh, help public broadcasting. Uh, no commercials. We have thanks that we give to some uh, great corporate people who've helped out. But they don't, John, they don't get a full message. They, they get a little blurb, a, a, short, blurb right? a short little blurb. And it's thanks. And, they, and they're, uh, they're each giving us a substantial amount to help us bring the games. But it does do all the job. You. Uh, the viewers out there, you're the ones who really do the job. 1-800-477-WMHT. And don't forget to tell us the size of the shirt you want as well. That's pretty important if you want well, to Well, that's actually all one size. You, you couldn't hear me before. <laughs> yes, I said I One did. size fits all. I Extra large is what you get. <laughs> and, and if it's me, it's going to fit everybody. It's been terrific to do Siena basketball again here on TV 45. This year it's almost sad we have to leave the arc for the last time along with Jeffrey Robinson, and he concluded his career in fine fashion tonight, scoring 20, as did Lee Matthews. Uh, Mark Brown led the club with 24. Siena with three players over 20 po the 20-point mark tonight as they won it 90-76. to 76. Two 20-point scores for LeMoyne as well. Lenny Roush had 22, and Chris Buckholz had 20 for the Dolphins. Siena had 34 baskets in the game, 32 for LeMoyne. Siena 14 of 20 at the foul line. LeMoyne 9 of 14. Siena led from start to finish tonight. In many ways, no contest, as is expected to be a Division I team against Division II. LeMoyne drops to 16-9 on the year with the loss. Siena fin finishes up the regular season at 15-12. And, and their next game will be at the Knickerbock Arena in the MAC tournament this coming Saturday night. Any final comments, Bill? No, we've enjoyed the season, and in fact, it's not over because next Tuesday night, 8 o'clock is game time. It'll be on both 17 and 45, or if you happen to be, you're going to be able to watch it on one of those channels. And that's That'll be uh, the Section 2 finals next Tuesday night at 8. Okay, on behalf of Bill, of course, Kevin and Jim, this is John Graney. Thank you all for watching us. For the entire TV45 crew, good night from the Alumni Recreation Center.
presentation of Game of the Week Siena Basketball is made possible through member support and by Avis Used Car Sales, Callanan Industries, The Chevy Network, KeyBank NA, Napa Auto Parts, Pepsi Cola Albany Bottling Company, and by The Peacock Companies. You have just watched a WMHX Reaction Line program. Please call 356-5555 to record your comments about this program or any other in the Channel 45 schedule. That's the WMHX.